honest truth Open hearts, open minds Spirit stirring within All we do is show Coming together here, we share in more than enough, and we are ever becoming. That's the honest truth. Good evening, Envision Community Church. My name is Heather Lynn, and my pronouns are she, they. And many of you know that I am grateful to serve this community in the role of worship pastor. Our two co-pastors, Christy and Paula, are both away today doing pride things. Christy's involved in our county pride events, and Paula is preaching at a pride service in Atlanta, Georgia. So let's send them some love. Yes, because I'm sure they're going to watch this back. So we love you, Paula and Christy. Bless you and all you're doing. And then let's keep it going for the global branch because the live stream is going. So let's keep it going for them and give a nice shout out. Uh, that was our first of two gathering songs because we get the live stream going. Uh, welcome, Global Branch. If you'd like to share this live stream, please do so. And please make your presence known in the chat, saying hello, and maybe sharing where you are tuning in from. Those of us here in the chapel, if you'd like to help yourself to a hot cup of coffee or tea from the back corner, please help yourself. Please feel free to move about this space as you need to. Uh, there are also newcomer cards on little clipboards around this room. So if you'd like to share with us some of your info and thoughts for what brings you here, we'd love to hear from you. And you can fill that out and place that in the offering bag later on in our time together if you would like to do so. During this next song, uh, please uh, soak in this beautiful message that we are truly walking in grace. And we seek to lean into that and learn what that means here as a community. And feel free to add your voice as you are so moved.
Well, good evening and welcome to our second Sunday in Pride. I'm so excited to be here Ooh. and excited to see what Heather Lynn is going to be bringing us tonight. As one of the musicians that shares the stage, I get to see just how much dedication and intent and how hard they work to bring things. So I'm excited for that. And one thing I think I wanted to mention about Pride tonight was that I've been part of a movement of trans joy. And I think something that has been really important that I've learned through this movement is that pride invites us to hold that many things are true all at the same time, that we can see what is going on in our world and we can also know who we are and celebrate ourselves. That pride is a remembrance. It's something that is an existence, is part of our resistance, but ultimately, what is the most important is that our joy is sacred and holy. And so each week, we come together and we say these words together. So join me in saying our ethos. Married, divorced, and single here, it's one family that mingles here. Conservative and liberal here, we've all got to give a little here. Big and small here, there is room for us all here. Doubt and belief here, we all can receive here. LGBTQ plus and straight here, there's no hate here. Doubt and belief here, we all can believe here. We, we got this, it's fine. Women, non-binary and man here, everyone can here. Whatever your race here, for all of us grace here. In imitation of the ridiculous love almighty God has for each of us and all of us, let us live and love without labels. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Let's stand together as each is able and willing and acknowledge the presence of the author and source of life. And of course, in this song, the metaphor is a river of life. And so let's open up our hearts our minds, our beings to receive what spirit would give to us today, how spirit would speak to us and enliven us and heal us. Oh, river, oh, river, oh, river, river of life. Oh, river, oh, river, oh, river, giver of life.
Let's pray together. God, thank you for your abiding presence, for your never-ending river of life, for breathing us, for being with us through all of the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, wherever the tides are at, for nourishing us, for leading us, for guiding us. We pray that you would give us eyes to see with your love, and even though we continually practice this, we know that we need to see more and more of your love everywhere that we go, that there's more to see of your love. And we pray that you would give us strength and wisdom, and we thank you, and we practice trusting you and receiving your great gifts.
The peace of Christ to you, dear ones. The peace of Christ to guard your hearts and minds and bodies, your whole beings. Breathe in that peace. And then let's share a sign of Christ's peace together tonight, greeting one another in the name of love. Global Branch, if you haven't yet said hello, please do so. We would love to know that you're here. And um, of course, it's always fun if you share where you are in the world. If you haven't shared the live stream, please feel free to do so. Maybe with a note of why you feel like that matters, a note of your personal invitation added to it. Momentarily, I will bring a message and uh, maybe just take a deep breath with me while folks here in the chapel are, are mingling a little bit. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Mm -hmm. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine is the very first song I ever remember leading a congregation of my peers in singing together. I was probably, y'all, I was probably about four years old. For vacation Bible school at the United Pentecostal Church that was up the hill from where my mom and I lived in rural Maine, Carl Anderson's home state. And the United Pentecostal Church was the first church that I ever experienced, the first church my mom and I ever went to. My mom, a single parent and a survivor of domestic violence. My mom, someone with a high school education and learning to survive on welfare and the WIC program and then a secretary's income. I think she found comfort in the clarity of the rigid rules. And the United Pentecostal Church had some rigid rules, especially for women. Women in this church couldn't wear pants. We had to wear skirts or dresses and uh, couldn't wear makeup or any kind of jewelry and couldn't cut our hair. But get this. My mom, she was looking for a spiritual home. I think she was looking for the comfort and the support of community as a single parent. And uh, she was looking in the yellow pages for a church that had childcare. She ended up getting her hair cut by Paula, not our beloved Paula here at Envision Community Church, but another woman in, in my life named Paula. And get this, Paula was a hairdresser. And so at the very early stages of my life, when I began to learn about, you know, the possibility of God having rules for us, you know, and I was told that he did, uh, I also had this very special, you know, grown-up friend in my life who, who was very respected in this church and didn't follow all of those rules. So I was like, oh, there's maybe some conversation to be had here. Even at a very young age, I was very curious about this, these theological things, right? What did God expect of us? And I really wanted to please God, very much so. In fact, it's ironic, you know, that, that little song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine. If you remember, some of the other verses that we actually don't sing here when we do that song now. Uh, you know, there's a verse that goes, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, right? And with the, with the motions, which we definitely did, yes. <laughs> Or another verse went, um, don't let Satan blow it out. No, I'm going to let it shine. But I honestly have to tell you, one of my first very vivid memories of my light getting a little dimmed or snuffed out or questioned 
was in that very same church. You know, I was a creative little Heather Lynn, as you can imagine. And I love to express that in a lot of ways. And we really, we, we loved church. We were so dedicated, right? We would go Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening Bible study, right? And so I remember this one Sunday afternoon, I was playing with my mama's button tin. I loved my mama's button tin so much. Um, I loved spreading the buttons out on the floor. I loved organizing them according to colors and how many holes were in them and different things like that, the shape of them. And, uh, and one afternoon, I was like, I'm going to make a bracelet out of these buttons. And I feel like I remember it just being this mod podge of buttons. Like it was just all, the, all different buttons, you know, on this something that I could wear on my wrist. I was so proud of this, you guys. I was so excited about this button bracelet. And we went early to church that evening. My mom got very involved in doing the bulletin board, and she was very creative with that. And I remember encountering Pastor Churchill. That was his name. It was Pastor Churchill. And I, and I was so excited, and I looked up at Pastor Churchill, and I was like, look at this button bracelet that I made today. And I feel like I can still, I mean, at this point in life, it really is probably technically that I'm remembering, remembering this, right? But I think of this towering, hovering being, right, looking down at me, and I'm looking up at his nostrils, right? And he's like, oh, the Lord would not be pleased, because one of the rules for young ladies was to not be adorned with any ornaments or makeup or jewelry. And so I felt so sorrowful, you guys. I felt so like I had done something that I felt so good about naturally. And then it was like smack down. We're going to snuff that little light out, right? So he didn't know what he was doing, right? And that's why I love, I find comfort in what Jesus says on the cross when he is mistreated, certainly on a different level, right? Incredibly different level. And yet, serious, significant. Um, he didn't know what he was doing. And there was actually a lot of theology that I absorbed from that church to various churches that we went to the Christian school I went to, listening to the 700 Club and focus on the family, lots and lots and lots of theology that I had to recover from, right? But I have to say, I really believe, as I look back on that time now, that Christ was there, that grace abounds, even in this place that, tra even in these spaces that traumatized me, the spirit was still there. Christ was still calling to me. And I think Christ even sort of haunted me in my years where I had so many legitimate misgivings about the church. Even in those years that I had to kind of step back and heal and explore and be curious about all of the various imaginations for the divine, Christ has never let me go. And I'm really grateful for that. One of the things that I'm also really grateful for too is that in these spaces, I did get to sing a lot. They really did like it when I sang. And, um, and that's something that's never changed. And uh, one of the ways that I would sing, uh, when I would do like special music for offering, we would use what we called soundtracks. And they were these cassette tapes. So I love that Amy picked out this image of the cassette tape for, for today. A cassette tape with, on one side, there was the artist singing the song, so that's how, how, how I would learn it, and I would just listen over and over and over again. And then you would turn the tape over, and that was the side with only the music. And so I would sing at church and at school, and I loved artists like, I don't know if any of you would remember these folks or if you know of them, but Steve Green was someone that I listened to all the time. There were also these debates about what was acceptable in terms of, um, you know, what, what is good worship music. And I was listening to these conversations at a very, very young age. Uh, you know, was it okay to have drums in worship? Some people thought that was actually demonic. 
And someday, maybe I'll share with you why now I find that theorizing to be actually rooted in white supremacy and racism. Maybe sometime I'll go deeper into that or you can ask me afterwards. Um, but I always thought it was so interesting, all of these different ideas and opinions. My mom was very interested in theology as well. She would always have these big biblical commentaries in our home library. She would always be studying family psychology and theology, um, partly because of the way she was treated as a single parent, as someone who had been divorced before she had me. As a woman, um, there were times that she really felt called to leadership, and she was wondering, like, why aren't I allowed to lead here when I obviously have something to offer, you know, um, when they're in need? And so she would search scriptures, and she would read these commentaries, and she would think out loud, and I would overhear these conversations, and I would recognize that there were, this was a conversation happening, you know? I also wrestled personally with, um, with my origins, being someone, quote, born out of wedlock as a product of sin. And so part of my story growing up was wrestling with how could I be both a bastard child and a beloved child of God, you know? Uh, one of the songs that I remember singing, I don't know if, you'd, if you would remember this too. Love in any language, straight from the heart, pulls us all together, never apart. And once we learn to speak it, all the world will hear. Love in any language, fluently spoken here. That was Sandy Patty, a little Sandy Patty there. Or Michael W. Smith, if that's ringing a bell. Um, friends are friends forever, if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never, cause the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go, in the Father's hands we know that a lifetime's not too long. To live as friends. Anybody? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I remember singing, I, I, pref I learned Sandy Patty's Love in Any Language, and I remember talking with a friend of mine about, like, if it, were, if it was actually a godly song or not, because it didn't mention Jesus in it, and it didn't mention God. And I remember us talking about, well, but it is about love. And I wonder if we... I don't think we said it out loud, but I wonder if we realize that all love that is true love is God's love, you know? And it was actually in college that I really began to think for myself. I really was such a good girl, y'all. I really believed what I was told to believe. I signed a purity pledge like five times, I think, you know? And, um, but it was in college when I went to Gordon College, just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, when I started to think for myself a little bit and allow my curiosity to lead me. It was in freshman year I heard a professor say, all truth is God's truth. And I was like, you know, that even if a truth wasn't stated specifically in the name of Jesus, if it's a life-giving truth, if it's a liberating truth, if it's honest and authentic, then that's God's truth. And a, a good friend of mine uh, in San Diego, a pastor there, he said this one little thing to me several years ago when we first met, and he said, how much truth is in honesty. And so that's why in that song we sang as the buffer song, the very first gathering song, where it says, we're ever becoming, that's the honest truth. That's why that's in there, because Brent said that to me. So in college, uh, you know, this was a, a non-denominational Christian college, and so there were all kinds of Christians I had never really encountered before, because in the version of Christianity that, that I grew up in, 
it was like, well, those other Christians, they're really lukewarm Christians, and, and God is going to spat them out of his mouth. Talk about pretentious, right? Uh, but I realized at Gordon that there were all of these beautiful, faithful expressions of following Christ. And I actually ended up going to an Episcopal church and falling in love with the liturgy there. And I got to listen to friends of mine who grew up in different Christian tradi traditions. And I found this so enriching, so enlivening, and so beautiful. I learned about the saints like St. Francis and that tradition. I started to learn about Celtic Christianity and how they had a prayer for everything, like changing the diaper of a child or lighting the, you know, lighting the hearth. And I loved this so much. It made me fall in love with Jesus even more. I led worship there as well at our, our chapel services. And, uh, but still there was this... Um, there was this kind of oppression I was still carrying, you know? There was this the shame and fear that had kind of been embedded in that theology I was carrying. And you know what? I'm still working it out. I'm still shedding it. I'm still trying to shake it off. And that's why I so value our time here together in the songs that we sing here. One of the things that began to really transform my theology and my approach to worship music was working in a Lutheran church right out of college. I uh, moved from Maine to Minnesota. My first gig somehow was this mainline church, a Lutheran church. I think they wanted someone kind of young and cool and like would bring like the, the jazzy music, right? <laughs> um, and I found it so curious that these folks so believed in infant baptism. Now, I didn't tell you my own baptism story. I went to a Baptist church and was baptized at 10 years old on an Easter Sunday, and I sang that Sunday, and it was so meaningful to me. And I'm glad that I was, like, conscientious and aware of what happened, you know? And I was so curious about these folks who believed in infant baptism. And I don't have any sort of, like, this is the right theology of baptism at all. But I am going to say that engaging with that theology transformed my life, you know, being in conversation, contemplating um, the grace of God that these folks recognized in this ritual was so powerfully changing for me. And uh, this was actually one of the big topics of conversation when Jason and I first started dating, because Jason's father is a Lutheran pastor. And so we would, we would talk about this and explore these ideas. And then um, in the church that I was a part of, I got to explore the scriptures in community in a very new and healing way. The Bible had really become for me something, because of how it was interpreted, it had become kind of like what felt like an abusive relationship for a while. And so it was very healing for me to return to it within the context of community and this gracious spirit-filled approach to it. And so I'd like to share with you this song that I wrote as I was exploring uh, the Lutheran theology of baptism. And I'd also love to make mention of the fact that we in Vision Community Church are having another baptism service coming up soon, July 9th. And if you would like to be baptized, uh, Paula is the one to be in touch with for that. Um, but the thing that really made a difference for me was this idea that whether or not you are aware of it, you are inherently, intrinsically, you can find your identity as a child of God, as a child of love. So I give you this song that I wrote for baptism. The greatest inheritance of love in the world in the water and the world is here See 
remember the day I was able to finally accept that I and all others are fully, completely, irrevocably accepted by God. I had been working with another pastor at the church where I worked, and he became a really marvelous theological mentor for me. And I would play the devil's advocate around these things that I'd been so taught to believe, but I didn't really want to believe them. And I finally realized in our conversation that, um, you know, if there is a God, then actually what would make her God is that she would absolutely want to love people that I want to love. And that she would know how to love people I didn't know how to love, you know. And I viscerally felt this weight of religious oppression fall off me. And I felt freed. And I called that my spiritual emancipation. And if that's what getting born again is, then I did that day. When I realized that that God has a stake in this. I had been taught all of these rigid rules for pleasing the Lord. And my goodness, it keeps you on your toes when they say to you so often, what if you were to die tomorrow? Would you be ready to meet the Lord? Would you be ready to face judgment? Keeps you on your toes. (laughs) And so this next song, and I'll close with this, uh, is kind of another theological manifesto of mine where I believe that, yes, Yes, absolutely, let's be seekers in this life. Let's practice presence to the divine. Let's lean into love. Let's let's grow as we are shown the need to grow and also know that the light will be there always, that God will come find us if they have to, you know? I've played this song for you a couple times recently, uh, but it just made so much sense to do it for today. So if you uh, feel like you've caught on to it, uh, you can feel free to sing along. These, uh, these are new mantras of mine as I seek to follow the way of Jesus. Uh, follow the flow of freedom. Hold the hand of hope. Learn the lead of love. Trust in the light will find us wherever we roam. Trust and the light will find us wherever we roam. 
So that is my new soundtrack for life, love, and liberation. And there's so much more I wanted to share with you. And I ran out of time, so maybe we'll do this again sometime. But let's worship together now with our gifts and our offerings. I do think of offering as sort of a collective self-care and nourishment where we pool our resources together to bring life to this community and contribute to the ministry of Envision Community Church locally and globally. So all of the ways to give are listed on the screen or in the chat. Uh, you could go to envisioncommunitychurch.org slash give if you'd like to set up a recurring gift. That would be very incredible because that helps us actually strategize and envision and uh, you know, plan for making dreams come true. You could also use paypal.me slash ECCgift. Text a one-time donation to 84321 or place a gift in the bags being passed around this space. Uh, yes, the newcomer cards can also go into the, the bags. So thank you for your participation and generosity in this way. Mary Jo, thanks for leading us in communion. Oh, thank you for your message today, Heather Lynn. I'm Mary Jo, and my pronouns are she, her, and um, I was at Boulder Pride earlier this afternoon, and boy, was there a lot of the divine there. There's also a lot of flags and um, labels, and pride always makes me think of labels. I know in our ethos, we say that we want to live and love without labels. We want to free ourselves from labels, from othering. And yet somehow during Pride Month, we also cling to labels and I get it because somehow these labels tell us who we are and how we identify and who we love. It makes sense because sometimes we choose labels to claim our own existence. The thing about language though is that all too often we're limited by labels that weren't even created by us. So I'm grateful for those who came before me, who took the labels, infused them with love, and claimed them as our own. And I'm also thankful for those who have come after me, who are showing me that we are so much more than gay. The magic of Pride Month is that there's room for all of the labels and none of the labels. There's room for us all, gay, straight, 
queer, non-binary, asexual, unidentified, we are the future that we need. And most of all, what pride means to me is community. Part of being in community together is bearing witness to the injustices experienced by some within our community and understanding that these injustices affect us all. Marsha P. Johnson, one of the prominent figures in the Stonewall Uprising of 1969 said, no pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. Jesus taught us a lot about liberation and many of those lessons started here at this table in communion together. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat in a room among his disciples to celebrate the annual Passover feast. He took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, and remember me. Later that same evening, he took the cup, blessed it, and said, this wine is the blood of the new covenant, a promise for the redemption of all people. Take, drink, and remember me. At this church, we have an open table. During communion, everyone, without exception, is invited to receive the bread and gluten-free crackers and grape juice, which for us represents the body and blood of Christ. If you choose not to commune, that's fine too. You're welcome to remain seated. You could also go to the back and light some candles or write in the prayer journal that uh, is read by the pastors every week. If you're joining virtually, join us by taking whatever elements you have and feel free to share those in the chat. For those of you here tonight with us, please come as you're ready, remembering this is Christ's body broken for you and Christ's blood shed for you.
Hello, my name is Tanya, my pronouns are she, her, and we have a few announcements tonight. All right, announcements, I need to take off my glasses. Um, all right, so um, on your way out, right there by the door, um, sign up for the Pride Booth Volunteer Shift. We just had Pride today, it was amazing and awesome. And our next one is going to be on June 30th here in Longmont, so sign up, we'd love to see you there. Um, let's see what else, oh, talking points will be provided while you are there. Um, there's also a really amazing photo booth uh, that we have set up where people who stop by, we can usher them to the photo booth and take their pictures. It was so lovely to experience that today. We got in touch with a lot of people and it felt really awesome. Um, let's see, yeah, you can just be a friendly face for our community, celebrating pride. We have stickers, we have candy, we have temporary tattoos. All of those were very well received. And yeah, we'd love to see you there. So June 30th. Um, Pride service in celebration here at ECC is going to be on June 25th, so join us for one or two hour shift at, okay, that is something different. Um, okay, so Pride service here on June 25th, and I think there's a celebration after, is that right, Amy? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, um, and then our summer camp out, switching gears, that is coming up. So register now. We have reserved campsites at Carter Lake for Friday, July 21st to Sunday, July 23rd. Um, you can find the registration link on our uh, Facebook events page. If you have any questions, you can email Pastor Christy, Christy at envisioncommunitychurch.org. And for all these details and more of our upcoming events, you can see the events tab on our Facebook page and website at probably uh, displayed up here. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. Let's stand together as each is able and willing. We're assume a posture that's best for you right now. We'll sing together these words that are inspired by the words of Jesus when he talked about heaven on earth being like this great banquet, this big, big old dinner party, and everyone's invited, literally everybody. So let's receive this invitation for ourselves and our own beings and consider how we may extend that as we go out. Bring in 